CFR Network, CFR News. Ariel Hawani doing the thing and standing up for himself <laughs> against a very powerful Dana White of the UFC, who he's been throwing jabs at, at every opportunity, in essence. But um, it's warranted because Mr. Dana White, as revealed in more detail in the hour plus uh, hit him up <laughs> of Dana White, and uh, more importantly, Paddy the Baddie Himlet, Scouser Youth, pure madness. Now, from what I can see, Mr. Scouser Ute is, uh, you know, he's over there in America. He's getting all the sun and stuff. He's eating all the GMO foods. You know, he's, he's embracing the coach. <laughs> and he's like, what's a good way to get into Dana White's good books and also create some additional content for the old podcast, which everyone seems to be doing. Everyone's a podcaster now. Everyone's creating content, especially um, since the old zombie apocalypse. But anyway, so clearly everybody can see who has eyes to see and ears to hear that uh, Paddy is, uh, yeah, no, playing the old games. And rather than just having a, a, a conversation, and even, you know what would have been better? If he would have just had an open on his conversation so look Dana what's happened with you and Ariel Hawani I, I, there's this long on, ongoing stuff I've heard bits I've heard obviously some clips from you I've heard Ariel say bits and pieces like what on earth actually happened and I've heard Joe Rogan I've heard Brendan Sharp even though obviously you know he's 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 clearly got some CT going on there, but he's coherent at times. So like, I'm, I'm confused. Like what actually happened? That would have been a lot more of a, let's say an interesting conversation rather than all the profanities and Ariel Hawani's a, a dirt bag. And I'm not going to use the, <laughs> the language that they used on the theme. Like cool. A lot of people don't like Ariel. Some people do. <laughs> he creates some interesting and some good content. He has some good guests on there. He's clearly got good relationships with a lot of the fighters. Obviously, you know, certain managers that will remain unnameless. Clearly, he doesn't have a good relationship with what, well, you know, we are all human beings and we all do different things and we all kind of, we can't be everyone to everybody, you know, be that person. So there is going to be conflict, unfortunately. You know, and I don't agree with all the stuff he says, but I think he's a good um, media personality, you know, for the sport. And if he is indeed correct, what Mr. Hawani has been saying about Dana White, that is corporatized bullying to the tenth degree. I mean, you 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 can't get any what. And, you know, at the same time, Dana, you, I guess you can't blame Dana because if that's how he feels and that's how he feels and he, he wields that power, then the result is he's going to contact ESPN, he's going to contact all these people and say, look, I'm messing around with that Ero Hawani guy. I don't want him, I don't want him to, to have anything to do with the UFC. He messed up the, 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 the UFC 199 or 200, whatever the hell it was. And he's a snake and whatever else. So that's what's been happening. And he goes on the podcast with Mr. Paddy. And they're going on. So let's play a little bit of, you know, that's just the intro to it. I'm pretty sure you all know what's going on. Let's play a little song. I appreciate it, my friend. I'm, I'm holding the string out here, and you, you gave me the hot tag, and uh, that is very kind of you. So uh, let us get into it. Wow, what a morning. What a day. I will, uh, I will gladly answer this question. So earlier today, I'm uh, just getting ready. I'm having a good day. Good morning. Truth be told, both of my boys are sick. Actually, right before uh, I went live, my son showed me a pretty 
gnarly um, allergic reaction on his back. So I'm a little bit uh, sad about that, but they'll be all right. They're young, they're strong, they're defiant. Um, but overall, a pretty good day, getting ready to uh, do the show. And my old friend, P.T. Carroll, sends me a text and he says, hey man, I'm really sorry about you know all the Patty stuff. And I was like, what are you talking about? Didn't see it. See? No idea what you're talking about. And he goes, oh man, well, here it is. And so I see this clip that is now making the rounds. Uh, at first was confused as to what it was, what platform, all that stuff. But I understand this is from uh, Patty's podcast. And he has uh, Dana White on as, as a guest, his boss. And they're talking about me. And I listened to the clip. I watched the clip. And I will tell you, truth be told, you know, been doing this now for a minute, as the kids like to say, <laughs> 2006 to be exact, getting a little <laughs> older, now in my 40s. There was a time when I knew if someone was talking about me, if I knew it was coming or if I knew that there was something out there or if I was watching something or listening to something, I would feel something in my chest. Like I would feel almost like my heart go into my gut. Like I would, I would feel like shit. I would feel sad. I would feel depressed. No one wants to have people talk about them mm -hmm. negatively, right? No one wants to have people shitting on them. No one wants someone in the public eye to be insulting them. It doesn't. Now, do you think this is this is a, a freestyle, or do you think this has been carefully manicured and prepared? Uh, I would say it's a mixture of both. Clearly, they've had the time because if we examine what he said he woke up to a text from pete c blah 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 and as the hour plus one hour and 50 minutes and 30 seconds as per the clip they've clipped it out um we've got audio we've got um <laughs> tweets and stuff so you know he's a good orator as well so let's bear that in mind feel good that's not why you get into this and in my younger days, I used to have pretty thin skin. And, and luckily, over time, you develop thicker skin and, you know, you, uh, you develop a knack for letting things roll off your back. And so that's kind of, you know, something that you have to kind of go through a bunch of stuff to, to get to that point. And so I watched this clip and I see, you know, like the text and then I see, uh, all right, now people are starting to tag me in, in, uh, in the, the video clip on Twitter and all that stuff. Instagram. And I asked myself, sort of like a fighter before a big fight, we had someone recently tell us this, like, wow, I was shocked I wasn't nervous. Shocked I wasn't nervous. I was asking myself, why aren't you feeling anything here? And this is not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not doing a gimmick here. I'm not, you know, I, I actually legitimately asked myself, I checked in on myself, why aren't you feeling anything here? Why aren't you fired up? Why aren't you feeling sick? Why aren't you feeling sad? Why aren't you feeling down? Why aren't you feeling depressed? And I came to this conclusion. Number one, as you all probably know by now, as a human being, as, 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 a, as a person, forget promoter, forget businessman, forget any of that. As a human being, man to man, the respect that I have for Dana White or perhaps lack thereof, non-existent. And I've said this before, I, 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 don't, I don't view him as a human. I just view him as an entity. I view him as the face of the organization that we talk about ad nauseum on this show and other shows. So hearing him say... <laughs> that is very, very telling on, on in two ways and in two different perspectives from what Ariel has just said and how it is going to be perceived on Dana White's side. And just think... So Dana White is no longer a human being. Now, I get it. Get the vitriol because if look, if someone's trying to take away your means of of existence, of sustaining you and your family, i.e., trying to take your job away, your livelihood away, how would you feel? I'm pretty sure some people have been in that kind of situation, and generally, you want to physically do something to that person. You know, you want to exact revenge. So I get it, but let's peel the layer back. Well, no, we're not going to peel the back the layer back even more. We'll just think, especially in the climate of what's being said in the media these days, 
have a think about that. Say the same old things about me, the same old insults with no substance, with uh, nothing really backing in, no factual backup. It, it, it is so tired. I'm so immune to it that I don't feel anything anymore. It's, you know, this is grade five stuff. This is, you know, oh, wow, he called me a name. Great. Um, don't feel anything. Don't feel fired up. Don't even get upset about it because I've heard it before and it's just the same old, same old. And, and for someone his age to be talking about anyone like that is, you know, you can, you can, you could come up with your own um, conclusions there. But I honestly didn't feel anything from it. However, I then listened to Patty, who, as you all know, have had a long standing relationship with and have never heard him, you know, speak of me publicly like this before in the past, when I, you know, when I heard him say that, I was thinking, all right, all right well, why don't I it. feel a certain way let's about get to it? Let's get and, to uh, it. I'm going to respond with the truth to the lies. Now, that's an important thing. Now, two sides to every story. And then the third entity is that is the truth. <laughs> whether we pick um, equally from both sides or not, but the truth has to come out. And uh, there's some towels, man. There's some definitely some definite towels. Uh, it's not looking good for Patty. This was, I don't, I don't understand what Patty was thinking. Well, I do, but he had to, it's very short sighted to have done this. I hate all these journalists. Especially the ones what Ian offers, you know what I mean? Like Ariel Hawani in particular, like he loves earning money off fighters. Yeah. Like, ever. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to hypothesize that um, a certain potential manager, Graham Boyland, <laughs> or even somebody else, has got in, into his ear and said, look, this is, this is, this is, this is the marketing ploy. Because, you know, this is what's going to get the clicks. This is, you know, going to put you in good stead with the UFC, i.e. Dana. This is the avenue we're going to take with this podcast. Because it just... <laughs> MMA journalists or media making money off the fighters. <laughs> Come on. I mean, like, the... Outside of your classical, uh, I guess, MMA fighting and whoever, morning combat and all those guys, you think got your, you, you, you like pop culture kind of sports channels, you know, with loads of advertisements on there. And they're clearly, you know, are, are, are quite successful revenue wise in regards to sponsorships and the click throughs that you get from from the old YouTube now, I'm pretty sure they're going to be saying, look, we're going to get you your vehicle. We're going to put you up in a hotel if you're obviously traveling, et cetera. And we'll potentially give you a little something as well. That goes without saying, but you, media, journalists, you don't, that's a conflict of interest to be paying. I mean, I, I sometimes get it. Oh, watch your budget budget for the interview. And I, I say, there's no budget for an interview. What are you talking about? <laughs> this is an, an opportunity for you to come on and, and, and express and give people a a, um, a view of you that they may have not seen before, dispel some myths, etc. So if you want to pay me by all, by all means, <laughs> I won't accept it. But we, this is not how it's done. Every decent job he's had, he's been sacked from. All right, let's pause it there. Let's pause it there, Frank. He loves earning money off of fighters. Uh, you'll you'll hear this from time to time, and I'm not really quite sure what that means. How am I profiting off of fighters? Uh, in a moment, you'll hear them talking about clicks and uh, YouTube views and things of that nature. Let me speak directly to the camera right here. In my entire career, my entire career, dating back to 2006, I have not earned a single penny from YouTube off of any of the MMA stuff that I put out there. And I, and I, and I stress MMA and I'll tell you why in a moment, not a single penny. This show, I don't earn a single dime 
off of any views from this show, any downloads off this show. This is the truth. You can either believe me or you can. And if you don't, go ask the CEO of Vox Media, Jim Bankoff. Dating back to when I was working for AOL Fan House in 2009 and this show started and it was called um, Fight House Radio and then the MMA Hour three weeks later, I have not earned a single extra dime. I've never gotten a bonus. I have never gotten a dime because a show did 100,000 views, 10,000 views, a million views. When we have Izzy in studio and it got like 800, I didn't earn a single penny more. Because he's a s salaried employee with nothing written in for him to get bonuses, which, mm, you know, he can take that with a pinch of salt. If he hasn't negotiated something like that for his contracts, he'd be crazy unless the uh, upfront money outweighs the potential in regards to uh, views uh, and click-throughs, etc. cetera. Um, but business, man, come on, y'all. I know people who are young and stuff, but... And this new technological age in regards to YouTube and monetization, et cetera, et cetera, it's not the most complex thing, but it's not rocket science. It really isn't. Less, it's all, I have a contract. I have a contract and I make the exact same amount and I have never even gotten a bonus. I've never had a great year and someone's like, you know, because your views were X high or you did better than we projected. I've never even profited in that way off of anything I've done with Vox, off of anything I've done with ESPN, off of anything I've done with Fox, off of anything I did with MMA Rated. I don't get an extra dime if Izzy's sitting in that chair or Connor's sitting in that chair or Patty's sitting in that chair or anyone's sitting in that chair. Do you see the difference? Do you understand the difference? Do you understand how dumb this is? All right, let's continue. Um, and, and go to the top for a second because it was the second thing there that I wanted to address, if you don't mind, Frank. May and he freaked out. He freaked out. He went all the way to the top of the company and tried to get them to renege on the deal. That's the kind of person that he is. Tried to get them to end the deal before it started, before he even came public, because he didn't want me. Finally, he, he made it to the big time. Finally, he made it to the worldwide leader. He didn't want me there. He couldn't stomach the idea that I would be there. He got rid of me at Fox. And now here's his big moment. He made it to the worldwide leader. And look who's there, his old pal. So he tried to end it. Luckily, now this is Dana White. He's talking about for me. The good people at ESPN said, "No, we're going to honor this deal, and we want him around." Every single step of the way, while I was at ESPN for three years, he tried to mess with me. He tried to feed things to Brett so that I would look bad. He tried to tell managers not to have their clients come on my show. One, as you know, abided by it. He tried to tell managers that if they gave me information. Oh, so that's where it's come from. So, because clearly Ali Abdelaziz, <coughs> pardon self, who has a huge stable of fighters and has a very, very good relationship with the UFC and also a pretty good relationship with the uh, World Series of Fighting, now known as the PFL. Hmm information or talked about fights and all that stuff that they would get cut off. Obviously that never happened. Tried to do many things over the time and even tried to tell the powers that be that I was hurting the pay-per-view sales, that I was being too negative, that I wasn't covering the sport in a fair, honest, and positive way. Well, what happened? My great colleagues at ESPN were actually tasked to put together a highlight reel of all the positive things that I was doing covering the sport, appearances on SportsCenter. I didn't want to feel any of that. And so I said, you know what? It was a great experience. Three years. Let's move on and let's see what else is out there. And so again, the two things he said at the top there, lie, lie. And these will be regurgitated throughout uh, the clip. But I think it's important to note that. So anyway, if you're going to come at somebody, you have to come with the facts. Forget the emotion, forget the, the bravado, forget the flipping clickbait and all that stupid stuff. If you're going to attack someone, if you're going to check somebody, yeah, if you're going to ask questions, maybe the questions could be surface level based upon the information presented. But, you know, come on, especially with Ariel Huwani, who bad did, no, no, bodied even, bodied and buried um, Brendan Sharp. Uh, it was just like, come on. After that, <laughs> you 
He should have said to yourself, nah, but let's not pick on Ariel. Because again, I, I truly believe that he's been put up to this for the reasons, number one, to get that little bit of extra. Yeah, great, Paddy. I like the way you kind of went off on um, Huwani. Because listen to his response as well. Oh, I, I, I didn't say a word. I just wanted to let you go. <laughs> you know, listen to the towels. No, not much these days that you that your feds is organic. Mm? Everything that was said was a lie, including those two things. We shall continue now, Frank. I mean, like, and now he's just a, a biased content creator. Yeah. You know yeah, what I mean? 100%. He hates on you, hates on the UFC, he even hates on me now. Yeah. And it Pause proper annoys. He's just a biased content creator. By the way, uh, this use of the term content creator. Is this supposed to be an insult? And of course he's biased. Everyone's biased. But let's look at the biases of um, Ariel Hawani. <clears throat> and most MMA media, especially the large um, platforms, they generally are all talking about the UFC. But yet you've got LFA. You've got PFL. you got Bellator. Uh, I'm sure there's another American promotion, which is pretty, uh, which is another feeder to UFC. There's another local one, and then you've got Pat Anthony Pettis, who's doing his thing, Pettis fighting or Showtime fighting, whatever it was. You got a Jorge Masvidal's thing, which is on both. I'm sure both of them are on Fight Pass as well. Where's the where's the where's the content about these 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 promotions? I know they're fledgling. Eagle FC, obviously they've stopped for some period of time. We haven't had a, a new event from them in quite some time. But like, people are majorly biased to UFC. We, oh, and we cannot forget one championship. I mean, I, obviously I'll try to keep, keep it to um, the Americas. You've got uh, Cage Warriors, obviously. Who's, who's doing the content about that? Occasionally, KSW, obviously, and there's another big promotion as well in Europe. Who's doing the promotion on that? As I said, occasionally we might discuss a a fight or two of one of those promotions. But yeah, there's a major bias towards towards the UFC, and it should be a lot more holistically looked at. Is this supposed to be an insult? Is this like a new thing that the kids are saying? Because yeah, I'm creating content. Another word for that, I guess, would be producer. Another word for that, I guess, would be host. I don't know. I've been on this one. Yeah, wasn't making any money off of that interview either. But enjoyed talking to him, enjoyed having him on, was happy for his success. Pull up the tweets. I'm not going to pull up every single one. When he got signed, when he got this, when he got that. Anyway, I'm not going to play the whole... There's a lot to unpack from this, and I'm not going to dissect the whole thing. But you, you, I would, I'm sure you've got the, got the gist of it. Um... And there will be people who are siding with that um, with, with Paddy because of their dislike to Ariel. But the truth is the truth, man. You, you've you've got to respect it, and you've got to respect him standing up for himself again <laughs> to um, <clears throat> a dominant force in the guise of um, Dana White. All this stuff behind the scenes that is. That's terrible, that is. <laughs> that is terrible. But he's clearly pissed him off. And, you know, he he thinks what he thinks is true. And, you know, maybe, maybe did he indeed leak this information before they were supposed to? Or, or what does it really boil down to? That's the million-dollar question. Um, whoever told Paddy to, 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 to do this, you're silly because this is doing nothing. Because look at the press conference after, and they're talking about, and, and him and Jared are going in about this grappling. No, I didn't grapple with you. What are you talking about? And you sub, and you sub me or something. Or what are you, what's going on? And you look at the body language of Paddy. There's hmm? a hint to the wires should be more than sufficient. What are your thoughts? Let me know in the comments. Like, comment, subscribe, share. Let's get the numbers up on the CFR Sports. Let's get the numbers up on the CFR News. Uh, we'll be back.